Hello and welcome to this video, my name is Barry Beckham. Before we move on, can I remind you that PTE AV Studio is now available for both PC and Mac computers. If you go to www.wnsoft.com, you can download a trial. Just recently I saw a question asked about PTE AV Studio and I think a short video reply may cover quite a few useful aspects of this software. An author wanted to create a slideshow based on one constant, which was that each image would have a duration of around 10 seconds, but for the first four seconds the image would be faded out and the title of the image would be shown. Then the title would fade off and the image would fade on screen, around the four second mark. The question asked, what is the best way to set this up so it can be repeated many times and that new images and titles can be used for each slide? Now this is something that I've created for my own camera club in the past to allow images to be presented with their titles. Now a slide style is probably best suited for this, so let's set that up. Now it would help if the images we're going to use were all correctly named to start with. That way we can have that name created automatically for us via a text template. So let's begin with the few images you can see here in the main screen of PTE AV Studio. These have all been pre-sized to 1920 or 1080 pixels, so they're going to fill the screen nicely. Now there's many variations you could choose here if the images you're going to use are different aspect ratios. To begin with, I only really need one image down into the slide list below. So taking the balloon picture, if I double click, it'll appear down the bottom. First thing I'm going to do is to adjust the fade and also the slide duration. The question asks for the image to be on screen for 10 seconds. I think that's just a little bit tight, so I'm going to increase that to 12, but it's very easy to change this later. I'm also going to remove the fade on screen. I'm going to make that zero. But all we need to do now is to open up this particular image into the objects and animation screen and set up what it is we want to display. I'm going to make a start by removing the selection around the image we can see here. We can also see it's highlighted down in the bottom right corner and if we click anywhere in the grey area or in the bottom right corner we'll see that selection's removed. Because I want to go up to the top left and select text. We can see we get a little bounding box with the word text within it. What we can do here is to make the title of the image show automatically. Now we do that from the properties tab on the right hand side. And what we're going to do here is rather than type anything in this box, we're going to go and insert a text template. And the text template we're going to use is picture name. There's the title of the image we're going to display. Now I need to go to my animation tab because it's here using the pan and the zoom. I can position that title anywhere I want it. I think what I'll do straight away is reduce the zoom. Let's have a look at about seven. Even that looks a little bit on the big side. Let me go down further to five. I'm going to click over the pan wire here. And as I click and drag to the left, you can see I can position that text nicely at the top, just where I want it. And I could have this text anywhere, top, bottom, left, right, or even right in the center. So let's just think through what we want to do here. When the title appears, we don't want the image to be visible. So let me reselect the balloon from the bottom right. And just for the moment, I'm going to go to my opacity here. 
right click over the letter I and set zero. So when the image appears first on screen, all we're going to see is that title. How do we want the title to appear? Do we want it to just snap on screen instantly? Or would we like a one second fade onto the screen? I'm going to choose a one second fade. So if I go back to my text for a moment, with that keyframe highlighted on the far left where it says text one and the zeros, well then I can go to my opacity again, right click and set that to zero. Now let's go that down to the keyframe, right click and clone it. I'm going to position this about one second from the first one. I can do that quite effectively with keyframe time. It's just a personal preference of mine. If I put 1000 in there, I know the gap between this and this keyframe is just one second. So between the two, I want it to start off invisible, but I want to be able to see the text here. So if I go back to my opacity, right click and set 100, there we have it. Now what I can do is I can decide exactly how long that's going to be on screen. Now the author originally said about four seconds. So let's take four seconds, but let's take it from that point here. So really we need another keyframe. Right click, I'm gonna clone it again. This time I'm going to move this in to the five second point. Or better still, I've had a second thoughts, so let's go to the four second point. And at that point, I still want my balloon title to be visible. But one second later, I want it removed. So if I right click again and clone and set this one at five, I can go to my opacity, right click and set zero. So we're gonna see the text appear on screen and then leave the screen. So it's around this point where we want the image to appear. With the text selected in the bottom right corner, if you hold the control key, we can select the balloons too. So now we get to see the keyframes of both the text and also the image. So the author originally asked that between this point and this point, we couldn't see the image. Well, we've set the image to zero opacity. So if we move this keyframe to somewhere around there and then right click and clone another one and move it to that point, see how it snaps into position. Now I can make this keyframe 100% opacity. Let's take a look at what we have. Text is on screen text fades off just as the image appears. And of course, we do get the opportunity to stagger these if we wish. But let's keep things simple just at the moment. Let's go to the top right of the screen and close the objects and animation screen. And although the first of the images appears to be black, it's only black because at the start, we've told it not to display the image. So what we can do now with the work we've created on this slide is to make that into a slide style. So let's go down to the styles and themes button. We need to go into our styles, then to the tools and create a style. I'm going to use the category user styles and I'll just say this is 12 seconds with title. We can put who we are in this box. We can give any comment we feel is appropriate. But once again, let's keep things simple here and just create it. Now let's test what we've made. Once the slide style is made, I can bring as many images down into the slide list as I want. So we'll take all of these for the moment. I'm just double clicking them. This one's already selected, so I'm going to select the first of those that doesn't have a slide style applied, hold the shift key and select the last. Go to my styles and themes. 
to my user styles and there's the style I've just created. Looks good so far. What I'm going to do next is to just demonstrate exactly what we have here by going to the first of these and of course we could always hit or S and put a blank before that one if we wanted to do that. I'll start that with the blank. You can see the mini player is set at the start so I'm just going to press play. Currently we're on the blank. There's the first of the image titles. A few seconds on screen and we get the image. Now the time these remain on screen is going to be a personal preference. But you'll notice there that the image went off screen rather abruptly. Let's watch that again. Well those are the sorts of things we can easily put right and change depending on our personal preference. So for the moment let me just stop that. I'll go back to the image we was originally working on and we'll go back into the objects and animations screen. Because all I'd really need to do here is add two more keyframes to the balloon image and allow it to fade slightly at the end. So let's do that. Right click, clone a keyframe. In fact, I'll do it twice. This one needs to be right at the end and here the opacity needs to be zero. This one needs to be one second before, so we need that at the 11 second point. And here we need the picture to be visible. So as the cursor gets to this point, we fade out. So we can overwrite that slide style we've just made because we've adjusted it. Or if we wanted to, we could give it another name so we've got a derivative. I'll go back to my styles and themes here, tools, create the style. I'm going to overwrite it on this particular occasion. So let's create and replace. I'm going to do what I did before now, just select the others, go back to my styles and themes and apply the changes. Back to my blank once again, let's press play and take a look at how that change has impacted on the presentation of these images. So there's the text nicely on screen, the image fades on, we've got to decide if the image is on screen long enough or too long and we can make adjustments for that. But now you can see you've got a nice fade off and the next image and of course that slide style can be applied to hundreds of images in almost one operation. So from this point, we could add a degree of polish to this style of presentation, or we could just make changes, saving each change as a different style. Variation is the spice of life, or so I've heard. It may be worth looking at images being displayed in this way that may have different aspect ratios. Now, this is going to be fairly common in a camera club situation, but even amongst our own images, I guess. So to achieve that, I may want to display the image here slightly smaller than the screen resolution we're using. To do that, I can use the zoom controls over on the right hand side in the animation tab. But I must remember to select all of the keyframes for the image in question here we're working on the balloons. So I can select the first keyframe, hold the shift key and select the last. But of course doing that I can't actually see the image. So a little tip here, if you just hold the control key and select one of these keyframes, not only have we got all of the keyframes selected, but we can see the size of the image. So for example, if I wanted to come up here, and I wanted my picture to be seen at 85%, there you can see I can achieve that. If I want to, I can switch to the Properties tab. I could put a delicate line around the outer edge. I'm going to need to just 
reselect that so it opens up there's the border I don't want anything like that so I'm going to drop that width down to about four let's just click into the gray area and take a look at that even that looks a little bit bold but that's going to be a personal choice we can sometimes change the color and if we change this to a mid gray it may not look as though it's going to do much but quite often it does the job we want it to do but without being too overpowering and that here is all there is to it all we'd need to do next is to close the objects and animation screen and to recreate a slide style that give it a different name so we've got our original and now this one so let's go through that process one more time it's not going to take too long I'm going to go to my styles and themes I need my styles button and my tools and I'm going to create a style I've changed things very slightly from when we was last into this window I've changed the category to call it BD styles and I put my author and my website address and I've adjusted the title a little bit 12 seconds with a title template so all I need to do here is really to change the name and save this so after saving that second slide style I've brought you back into the main screen of PTE AV studio and you'll notice I have brought a couple of extra images into the file list here I'll select the cormorant double click now if you look down at the bottom left of the screen you can see the pixel value of that image is 1920 pixels by 1080 but these other images I've selected are quite different they're a different aspect ratio and they're also higher resolution so if we take the flying birds for example you can see down at the bottom of the screen it's 8192 pixels we'll double click that I've got an image here which is 6,000 almost 6,700 pixels we'll select that and there you can see the difference in the aspect ratio and of course with the image that I've called worship but if I select all four of those and I go to my styles and themes in the BD styles there's the original we created and there's the one we've created here either double click or select and apply we'll go back to the blank and we'll take a look at what we have as I press play of course we've got the blank to start then the title of the first image but of course now the cormorant image is going to come up 85% of its size but the real test is the next couple of images or the next three images because they're different aspect ratios and also they're much higher resolution images we can also choose to add backgrounds to slide styles either backgrounds we create or we could use the image in question but as you can see they're being displayed quite well even though they're all different sizes shapes and different resolutions Slide styles make our life pretty easy. If you're watching on YouTube, please consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. Below I'll add a couple of links to related videos on this subject that you may find useful. One is called Styles and Themes how do they work the other is slide styles with variable backgrounds remember too that this video and many others can be downloaded from my website I'll also provide those two slide styles we created as well download them import them into your version of PTE AV studio and adjust them to suit your own needs saving other examples that you can use into the future not forgetting, PTE AV Studio is now available on Mac computers. I'll see you next time.